Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. Today we're taking a look at this awesome device called Halo Sport 2. Now Halo Sport, the company, has been around since about 2013, and you may have seen the really fun videos working with Olympic ski teams, the NBA, the NFL, Navy SEALs, and many others. Now what's really exciting about their new device is that it has a more accessible price point for the average consumer as well as a number of improvements all around. For around $300, you too could be stimulating your motor cortex to run faster, jump higher, and learn that instrument that you've been putting off for years. Last spring I interviewed one of their co-founders, Dr. Daniel Chow, and learned a lot about the device and the progression of the company. Now that I've had more time to use it, we can take a look at specifics regarding hardware and software for this unique neurostimulation device in the form factor of headphones. When you pick the headphones up, you really notice that there's this strong yet flexible frame and the wiring is really well protected. You definitely get the sense out of holding these headphones that the high performance athletes that are going to be using these headphones can really put them through a good deal of abuse uh, due to the durability of the materials. Now right out of the gate, you'd start to notice the quality of this product. Sleek packaging and product design really catch the eyes. I love the green on black branding and the headphones themselves incorporate that design. When I was there in the Halo Neuroscience San Francisco office this spring, there was this glass display of all their previous designs and products and you could really see the quality improvement happening over the years that resulted in the fine product that we have now with the Halo Sport 2. One of the upgrades that Dr. Chow mentioned was an improvement in audio quality of the headphones themselves. The sound. Yep. So we were getting feedback that folks were using our headset as their primary set of headphones. Mm -hmm. So that was, I mean, we thought we were selling neurostimulators yeah. and the sound was just kind of an afterthought. Mm -hmm. But when people were telling us that, we, we, we took note. Uh, so we vastly upgraded the, the uh, audio quality mm -hmm. um, and it's also natively Bluetooth. And true to his word, I felt like I was wearing a pair of Bose headphones in terms of sound quality. Big, full bass, clear melodic treble, very nice. Now getting to the neurostimulation itself, we're talking about priming the motor cortex with direct electrical stimulation with very safe amounts of current that are not painful at all. Basically when you stimulate a neuron like this, it makes pathways in the brain more liable to something called neuroplasticity. On the cellular level, when we learn a new skill, it physically creates new connection pathways between neurons called dendrites that activate when a skill is being accessed. Think of learning how to ride a bike and how those different circuits of the brain are linking up, connecting, and correcting for firing patterns in order to learn how to balance and pedal forward. This holds true for any new skill that we're learning, whether that be basketball, playing an instrument, or even learning math problems. Now the area of the brain that controls movement is called the motor cortex, which runs down the side of our head. Priming the motor cortex for learning physical movements has the most evidence right now, which is why Halo Neuroscience is moving forward with this area first. It also has huge promise in assisting stroke victims in rehabilitation, which Dr. Chow mentioned in our interview as well. The motor cortex very coincidentally works perfectly for a pair of headphones because the arms of the headphones come down over the motor cortex very naturally. However, this doesn't mean that the company or science in general will stop at priming for movement learning as there's plenty to explore for mood enhancement, meditation, and even standard book learning. But getting back to the product that we have right now, we see this band underneath the frame of the headphones which holds the priming nibs. These are very soft projections that carry the electrical current to stimulate your motor cortex through your scalp. The nib band pops out very easily from a magnetic attachment at the top and then it's pretty easy to go and run the band under a sink for a minute or so to hydrate the nibs, then pop the band back into place. The Halo Neuroscience app is readily available in the App Store and has a great design as well, very easy to navigate. There's a very helpful tutorial as soon as you get into the app about how to do the setup, but honestly, it's relatively straightforward. After you've wetted the band and paired the electrical stimulation Bluetooth and the audio Bluetooth, you simply put the headphones on, nestle the soft primer nibs onto your scalp by gently moving the headphones back and forth to get the nibs between your hair, and then pick exactly what you want to prime. Your choice of prime 
timing depends on what exercise you want to do. This is primarily between arms and legs and hands and fingers. Your choice will cause the device to stimulate a different area of the motor cortex. And this is based on the distribution of what's called the human homunculus, which has been very well established by the scientific community. Basically, wherever you are in the motor cortex, it corresponds to a different body part. The motor learning part becomes most apparent to me when I use it to play guitar. I can use left hand stimulation to practice fret placement on songs or use right hand stimulation to practice rhythm guitar. Now it's a little difficult to do a randomized control trial on myself to see if it actually increased learning, but it certainly felt like I was picking up songs quicker. And Halo Neuroscience has been doing a lot of more scientific studies on people to show improvements that can be validated through statistics. As far as general running and weightlifting, the neuroscience is really interesting. So you can imagine certain brain circuits linking up to be very important in choreographed movements like basketball, golf, or other specific movement sports. But when it's just simple exercise, what's the benefit there? Well, there's something called central fatigue that causes your nervous system to sort of shut down before your muscles actually give out. And this was important in caveman days to protect us from hurting ourselves in the wilderness when there was less available food, shelter, and medical care. But these days we have more resources, it's a safer environment, so you can actually use neurostimulation to help you push past those mind limitations you have on your exercise. Makes sense to me, you know, people say it's all like half of it psychological or more right so it's like your mind gives out before your muscles are even yeah so I, you know there's you know one could argue that central fatigue might have been an important adaptive feature for humanity uh, when we were you know two million years ago where there was a break that said stop right right you're at risk of injuring yourself before you get rhabdomyolysis or something like that <laughs> or uh, yeah or even south of that you're at risk of injury mm -hmm. because if you injure your big toe for example it could be devastating mm -hmm. like two million years ago it could be yeah <clears throat> like uh, if you can't keep up with the herd then um, you know, the chances are you might get just dropped off and yeah um, yeah that that was that would not be adaptive mm -hmm. um, but these days, especially for elite athletes, um, you could argue that it's too conservative. Our, our natural set point is too conservative. Mm -hmm. Like we have a wrapper of all kinds of support. Yeah. And we should be allowed to push beyond that, especially if it's your livelihood. Mm -hmm. If your whole job is to push beyond that, mm -hmm. then we should think of ways of relieving that break. Now let's get to the priming itself. Once you have everything synced up and the device reads that it's been properly placed, it will begin that priming session. I really like to compare this to a transdermal electrical stimulation device that I reviewed a ways back called Think. Think was great and it was interesting. It worked good for reducing anxiety and increasing excitement, but I do have to say that the electrical stimulation on the forehead was pretty discomforting at times. Like you would feel almost a burning sensation until your skin desensitized to it if you had it at the higher levels. Halo Sport 2 really didn't do that for me, even at the highest level. And really what I felt was just very basic, tiny little bit of tingling and warmth as the device revved up, but this quickly dissipated. And you can adjust the strength of the neurostimulation if your skin is particularly sensitive. A good example of how benign this was is that one time I thought I was stimulating my right hand, which would have been my left motor cortex, and I thought I felt it revving up and actually feeling like the tingling on my left motor cortex, but I, would, I looked back, I was actually stimulating the left side, meaning that it was all in my head that it actually wasn't even stimulating that area that I thought was revving up. A lot of this I think is actually just the sensation of water on your scalp through the nibs which is good because it means the side effect profile for this device is very low. So the priming takes 20 minutes and you basically then go into your activity for your advanced learning. And you can take the nib band out if you want at this point and keep using the headphones for music during your workout or training session. Now I will admit that it takes a little bit of discipline to include prep time for your workout routine. You do have to plan to use this device and have a sink around for wetting the nibs. Like a bottle of water is not going to be enough water to keep it running to properly hydrate the nibs. And this might not work very well well if you're out on a trail running for instance. One thing that I found too is that in cold weather I didn't necessarily want to put the cold nibs in my hair so I did have to prime before I headed out for my place for a run. 
But in most situations, it worked just fine. And it's so fun to know that you're encouraging your body and your muscles to learn and adjust quicker. I honestly can't wait to see where this company goes next because there's so many different opportunities for influencing things like mood, meditation, and different types of learning by using direct electrical stimulation. So I'm really excited to see where this company goes in the near future. For now, you can definitely use it to increase different choreographed movements, whether that's learning an instrument or playing a sport like golf or basketball, or helping you push past personal limitations when it comes to central fatigue. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check out the interview that I did with Dr. Daniel Chow, where we go even more in depth on these concepts and talk about the evolution of the Halo Neuroscience Company.